As of the time of this recording, a thousand and one games have now been announced to be released at the Essen Spiel trade show. And I'm continuing to go through this list with my top 100 picks out of them, with my next 10 coming up next. Hey there, and welcome back to this Pair of Dice Paradise special series featuring my top Essen Spiel picks. Now, for this list, I'm featuring games that I haven't covered yet in other videos, along with games that have a 2019 English release date. And that still leaves so many games to wade through that I don't know, I've had to resort to skipping basic daily hygiene just in order to find time to cover them all. I mean, I, I distinctly now smell like old boots full of stagnant dishwater. Which actually, I think about it, is, is pretty much the norm. So, yeah, no harm, no foul. Now this episode begins the second half of my list, starting with number 51, Circadian's First Light, a dice-rolling worker placement game from Renegade Game Studios. The aim of Circadian's First Light is to lead a team of researchers on the planet R. Players need to manage their crew, represented by dice, to visit various parts of the planet for trade, farming, construction, and research. Players score points for negotiating with the locals, harvesting resources for the depository, upgrading their research base, and exploring the planet while collecting gems. Circadian's First Light is a worker placement game that distinctively does not look like it's going to smell like old dishwater. Number 52 is another game by Renegade Game Studios, Clip Cut Parts, which is called a roll and cut game. Clip Cut Parks claims to be the first of its kind, a game that puts a twist on the roll and write gameplay by introducing a new roll and cut system. In the game, players have been called upon by their mayor to create a set of gorgeous parks with greenery to beautify the urban landscape. With a pair of scissors and a plan, they will put their snipping talents to the test, clipping out a park full of dazzling multicolored features. The first player to complete five park cards wins the game. I'm not actually sure what I think about this one yet, and it's on my list because I want to get a closer look at it at Essen to see what it's really all about. I mean, on one hand, the idea of using scissors as a game component to develop an innovative new mechanism is pretty intriguing. On the other hand, though, when I look at the urban inception-like hellscape depicted on the box cover, I start to just shudder in fear that its inhabitants are stuck in some sort of living, perpetual Langoliers-like nightmare. Number 53 is Wayfinders, a game of pathfinding planes by Pandasaurus Games. Welcome to the whimsical world of Wayfinders, in which intrepid explorers race to chart new paths throughout the skies. In this game, players will need to think on their feet and outfit their planes with the right gear. Gotcha! Additionally, building hangars on islands and stocking them with the right parts can help the player's planes zip around with ease. Okay, sure, we'll do that too. Oh, and also, be sure to chart your courses wisely and unlock the various charms of the islands. <sighs> okay, sure, I'll add that, add that to the list. The seaplanes are ready to take off, so get your engines purring, put your goggles down, and get your wheels up! Okay, enough! Stop giving me chores to do, Wayfinders board game. Ah. Wayfinders joins my list because its modular design makes it seem highly replayable, its push-your-luck element hopefully retains a sense of risk in each and every game, and its estimated 25-45 to 45 minute playtime will hopefully keep it from becoming a drag if those risks don't pay off. Number 54 is Charted The Golden Age, an economic city-building game published by Jolly Dutch Productions. In this game, you're a merchant looking to profit from the budding trade in Amsterdam in the 1600s and participate in the growth of a multitude of chartered enterprises. For example, several European nations are racing to partake in the lucrative spice trade. Oh yeah! Who wouldn't want to slice that sexy Anglo-economic action? And to add to the trade trafficking titillations, in order to increase their working capital, you and the other merchants in the game are using stocks for the very first time in history. Hmm, flirting with fledgling financial foundations. Nice. To do all of this, players buy building cards, establish chartered enterprises, and purchase stock in them. And throughout the game, players expand these enterprises, increasing their stock value and ultimately increasing their wealth. Enterprises merge to accelerate their growth and add floors to their warehouses to easily gain value. Players will also aim to block enterprises that they don't have stocks in, but might be forced to help them grow as well. So buy the right stocks and build the right warehouses to put yourself on the path to victory. 
Now, for all of the fiscal hubbub that's in the game's description, Charted the Golden Age actually boasts that it sports an easy to learn and easy to play game system. That, and it also has lots of neat little 3D buildings all over the board. So in the end, I suppose that it was this game's combination of intense European spice market speculation action and cute little building models that pushed me over the edge to want to find out more about it. Number 55 is the political negotiation game set in the animal kingdom, Zooocracy by Haas Games. Breaking news, zoo animals have received their political autonomy and established a democracy in the form of a government. Now, each party wants to implement their own political agenda. To do this, each player will lead one of the animal parties using a clever strategy and their best negotiation tactics. Trust in your animalistic instincts to win elections and hold political offices, or plot and pressure the government from the opposition. In the end, whoever has implemented the most political goals wins the game. Got it? Because there's more. Okay. Every round, there is a parliamentary election campaign where players can spend their food tokens on different animal species to win their votes for the next parliamentary election. The parliament usually gets elected every other round, and after that, players have to form a coalition with a majority of seats in the parliament. Obviously, players with a better election result have an advantage during these negotiations. However, it is also possible for weaker parties to form a coalition against the stronger ones. So the players simply have to agree on how the government offices get distributed and which political goals will be implemented. In case the government lost its majority of seats in the parliament, there is also the possibility for the opposition leader to initiate a no-confidence vote against the current government. <laughs> However, of course, to be successful, this vote needs a majority of seats as well as to elect a new government. Moreover, there's also a presidential election that usually occurs every two rounds in a direct vote, and here, the winner takes it all. The president can also implement a political goal for his party and has some other further advantages. Finally, some random events may also shake up the situation and force the players to change their plans. <laughs> okay, there is a lot to unpack there, and it demonstrates why I think that zoocracy has the potential to either be a total mess or an intriguing exercise in diplomacy, negotiation, and a bit of backstabbery. The game's on my list because I am hoping against hope that the game of animal arbitration turns out to be the latter. And you know what separates us from the animals? Commercial interruptions. Hey, welcome back. There's some leftover Chinese food in the fridge. Number 56 is the medieval game of rolling dice and placing workers, Nocturian by Vesuvius Media. After thwarting the deadly elemental invasion which happened off screen, the young emperor Alexis IV tries to recover for his people their lost wealth and dignity, but he cannot protect the realm alone. Furthermore, he refuses to invest the kingdom's remaining wealth in the northern European spice market. As a result, the Evergreen Empire stands on the brink of annihilation. The noble houses of Evergreen hold power and resources, but due to their own personal interests, they never work together. Alexis must then find out which of the noble houses is worthiest and most loyal to him so he can put them in charge in the capital as first among his equals. Yeah, good luck with that. In Nocturian, players take the role of those noble houses in an effort to fulfill the quests of Emperor Alexius IV, prove their loyalty, and earn their place at the Emperor's right hand. Players accomplish this through dice rolling, worker placement, and resource management. They also work to fulfill quests, discover their legendary heirlooms, gather resources, and forge mighty armies with variable asymmetric powers. The players who do not accomplish these things may never gain the favor with the Emperor, but you know they'll also then have a lot more free time on their hands that they could use to maybe, I don't know, start their own kingdom. Perhaps a nice thalassocracy, you know, I'd live there. I even have a boat you could use. Number 57 is De Vere Games' Paris, La Cité de la Lumière, which I believe translates to Paris, the city of butlers who have been transformed against their will into living candlesticks. The game is set in the late 19th century Paris during the 1889 World's Fair, when electricity, available to the public, was a hot topic, and 99 years before hot topic would be available to the public. The availability of electricity eventually was spread throughout the city, creating today's beautiful nocturnal Parisian streets and coining Paris's nickname La Cité de la Lumière, or the City of Lights. Oh! In the game, the most well-lit buildings are admired more highly by passers-by. In the first phase of the game, players can either place tiles or grow their reserve of buildings. Then, in the second phase, players build on top of spaces in an effort to position their buildings as close to as many streetlights as possible. 
more streetlights solicit more adoration and points, but we all know that. And in the end, the player with the best lit buildings steals the hearts of the Parisian pedestrians and wins the game. C'est magnifique! Number 58 is Board Game Cafe Frenzy, a trick-taking card game with a worker placement mechanism by The Wood Games. In this game, you have opened up a brand new board game cafe and want to earn as much money with it as you possibly can. However, others out there are doing the exact same thing in the exact same city on the exact same street. So you better figure out how to succeed better than they can before y'all just wise up and realize that the real money is in funding lucrative working capital in the Amsterdam fledgling stock markets. You idiots! <laughs> Board Game Cafe Frenzy is a tactical trick-taking game that consists of two phases, preparing and opening the door, with each phase lasting 10 turns. In the preparing phase, each player buys a card from the market in one of five types. Board games, snacks, clerks, stores, and Wi-Fi, all things that are vitally important in running your board game cafe. And during the opening the door phase, players use the cards that they acquire during the first phase but players must play a different color than what's already been played, with higher numbers also being important. And after that, players undergo a final scoring, and the one who has earned the most money wins the game. Number 59 is an action dexterity, battle card driven, cooperative, campaign style, storytelling game with a medical theme, Sarah's Vision by Beloisi Group. Wow. What? Welcome citizen to Europe. 2163 AD, where you will find automated transport systems, flying cars, unlimited energy, seamless flow of information, and board games with a curiously long list of mechanisms. The growth of technology continues to disrupt, amaze, and influence society. In fact, the human race is fast approaching a huge, catalytic technological disruption that will democratize knowledge in all systems, potentially enabling people to live truly fulfilled lives. However, of course, there's one group of stick in the muds who oppose all of this, an elite few who want to see a return to the dark ages of the early 2000s when they held all the power. They're over 163 years old? Only one special organization, known as the Agency, of which you are a member, is responsible for ensuring the best possible outcome for society and keeping the citizens safe. Sarah's vision a story-driven, cooperative game of strategy and resource management is set in a world beyond imagination in which players take on the role of agency operatives and have to work through a series of story-driven events. I'll be honest, my expectations for Sarah's vision is mixed, partly because of the long list of mechanisms the game boasts, but also because pictures of the game also feature this Jenga-like structure that's also utilized somehow in the game. So while I'm not certain how all of these things will work together, it has made me curious enough to include the game on the list of the ones that I think are worth finding out more about at the Essence Spiel. And even though there weren't any images yet available for the 60th game on my list, I still wanted to include the sci-fi set collection dice game by Ludi Creations, So You've Been Eaten, a game listed as being for zero to two players. Yes, that's right, zero. I'll get back to that in a minute. But first, there's the more pressing matter that, yes, you, you have been eaten. But don't worry, as a deep space miner, this, this is simply a common occupational hazard. So, there's no reason to panic. The corporation that employs deep space miners, like you, has calculated that if you manage to mine enough crystals to meet your quota, well, then it will be cost-effective enough for the corporation to activate your jetpack and extricate you from the literal belly of the beast that you now find yourself inside of. However, if you fail to collect the necessary crystals by the time that you reach the end of the beast's digestive tract, you know what I'm talking about, you, you'll still be able to safely exit the beast. Alive, but forever changed. In So You've Been Eaten, the miner and the insatiable beast face off against one another, with the miner earning points by collecting crystals, and the beast earning points by developing immune responses as his bacteria attempt to devour the miner. So You've Been Eaten can be played as a game for two players, with a miner playing against a beast player, a game for one player, with the miner player playing against a sleeping beast, a game for one player with the beast playing against a robot miner, or a game for zero players with a sleeping beast against a robot miner. How does that work? Unfortunately, I don't, I don't actually know because that's where the game's description ends. And speaking of ending, 
that's it for this episode. But join me again in just a few days as we continue on to the next batch of my top picks of the games coming out at this year's Essence Spiel. Until then, I've been Chaz Marler from Pair of Dice Paradise, and take care. Whether you're a tabletop gamer or an interstellar life form that just enjoys dice, you'll absolutely adore hanging this playful Pair of Dice Paradise shirt upon your body. Unless you're a being of pure energy that has no corporal form, in which case you could, I don't know, use it as a dish rag. <laughs>